how they're supposed to have their team pressure because this is where they haven't really been able to find their stride. Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, we are into picks and bans for Inclave Gaming versus Diablos Esports. It's Inclave on the blue side with Diablos on the red. So their team logos fit the colors of the sides. And we see Braum taken away straight away, straight away by Inclave Gaming along with the Gangplank by Diablos. Yeah, and I think coming into this, we've seen Galio both of these games. I think Inclave need to ban it away if they're going to try and shut down what... Di this is just a way for Diablos to invariably, as you were saying, plug the holes in the sinking ship. Galio just means that it's very difficult to make these aggressive plays in the early stages of the game because he's going to have that ultimate available and just disrupt everything that you want to do. And it also means that Diablos have a very easy game plan going into this to utilize it. And as I say that, they are going to ban it away in the last one. I think that's a great um, mindset to come into this with Enclave, knowing that they're just stopping everything that Diablos can do in these early stages of the game. Yeah, we see the bands now pretty much rounded out for the side of Inclave and Diablos. This is going to be the Braum, the Azir, and the Galio for the side of Inclave with Zaya, Nunu, and Gangplank being taken away by Diablos. And they don't want Frappy to have that Zaya, but Frappy did just as well on that Callista. We're seeing a little bit of a deja vu comp coming out for Inclave already. Yeah, feathers, spears are all the same thing, realistically. It's just putting those stacks into the enemy team and seeing if you could tear it through them. And the Callista is definitely something that lends itself towards those early stages of the game, that early aggression that we want to see coming out from these guys. And Frappy and his and Shogun did get an early advantage on this champ beforehand, so I'm hoping to see a repeat performance coming through. Yeah, Jarvan going to be locked in there for Furion. And despite him having bad, like, early game deaths, he definitely was the one who was keeping Diablos into those kind of mid-game engages with the flag and drag flash into Cataclysm. And he's onto something he's very, very comfortable on. And something I actually wanted to talk about as well is that Igloo, very strong on the Nar and hasn't been banned away just yet. They might get a chance to on the side of Inclave if they don't want to choose it on the second rotation. And it looks like Diablos are going to lock in the Rise and the Jarvan. Already a lot of mobility and a lot of hard team fighting capabilities coming out from the side of Diablos. Yeah, I think the Nar, I was about to say, would probably be a last pick. And we saw Kerberos play the Camille into Igloo's Nar. And Igloo just ran away with that game. There was nothing that Kerberos could answer for. It was just all in Igloo's hands. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them just say it now and just play that anyway but it looks like they want to secure the bot lane for themselves gonna look towards the Kog'Maw and this is a very scary lineup coming through from Diablos right now if they decide to go for it but we are talking about already Igloo has this pocket pick of the Malphite that he likes to play into the Camille and I have found not a single person who's been able to deal with it right now so it's gonna be up to Kerberos to see if he's able to answer for how much pressure Igloo is able to create with this we've seen solo kills in this Malphite Camille matchup for Igloo so it's definitely going to be on Kerberos to have his work cut out for him. Yeah, Kerberos is going to be going that Camille in that top side versus the Malphite. Malphite being picked into it. That's how confident, confident Igloo is going into this matchup. Matchup even. Mincing my words. As Oriana is the next ban coming out from Diablos. Now they start to take away the things that can really hurt the rise. Take away the safe options. Take away anything that really counters them. And really give Larson that ability to suffocate the lane. Yeah, and speaking of stopping people from suffocating the lane, is taking the Caitlyn off the board as well to ensure that she can't be a menace to this Callista in the early stages of the game. And it's going to be a case of we're looking for a very strong team fight composition coming through from Diablos as well. So having that er that rise for the mid game is going to allow the Caitlyn to scale up. So trying to take that off the board already and you'll probably see as well the Kogma band coming through in a minute as well they just want to make sure that they've got some way of going into this game with pressure coming through in the bot lane and get that lead snowballing yeah we see now last bands coming in Sashwani taken away so they're not going to give up the other kind of quote-unquote tank jungler is still available but Janna taken away as well both bot lane have to be picked up there by Diablos and Seeing a lot of the meta picks being taken away. Looks like the Tristana going to be hovered, possibly locked in here for Smiley. And realistically, when you come into this situation, Kogma or Varus is generally the one you go for. But Tristana can also work. 
Yeah, I'd prefer the Tristana this time around because we we're just talking about the advantages that they want to gain through the bot lane. Tristana is one of the safer AD carries, particularly when you're looking at the Callista because she's got that Fates Call available at level 6. Having that rocket jump away just gives you that extra little bit of momentum, particularly when you can buffer that to escape away from this Tan Kench who's going to be directly in front of you at all times. So it makes it a little bit of a safer bot lane and allows Diablo, or Diablos even to play around this Callista a lot more but something that they're not going to be able to play around is that Zack who's going to be looking for the big engage but it's going to be an interesting dynamic coming through between the Malphite and the Zack it's nearly I don't know if you've seen the the way the Leona Alistair matchup plays first it's whoever goes in first loses and if these teams go in 50 50 it's going to be a case of if it's the zach who goes in first it means that the rest of enclave are going to group up to try and get the engage which is perfect for igloo on the malphite and it's going to be vice versa in this scenario as well where you see the malphite go in first so this is going to be a pretty interesting dynamic that'll be cool to see as the game goes on yeah, and they're locked in the Talia as well. So a lot of kind of early to mid game power coming out with that Talia pick. Has got good late game as well. Not exactly a pushover in the late game, but still something that they need to be able to look after for or look, uh, look out for in those mid game things. And it looks like Hado going to be picking up that ever trusty Lulu to keep the Tristana safe as long as the rest of his team. Yeah, and this is... I like the Talia pick into this scenario. We were just talking about how the Tristana is going to be able to play quite safe. But the thing is, when you've got that Weaver's Wall to come down as well, once the rocket jump's been used defensively to get away from Frappy and from Shogun, that's where you'll see this Callista try to come through and escalate things much further. And it's going to be quite difficult to deal with too. When you look at like Monkeys who can come in, there's a lot of CC that becomes available from this squad if they try to go for these four-man dive squads or even in the reverse scenario igloo in that top lane if kerberos is able to stay even at these early stages of the game and you're able to get the roam off from the zac and from the talia that can be a very dangerous gank to try and avoid from as igloo and if we can get this camille ahead this is where that snowball potential comes through and igloo will fall behind so i wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of pressure going up with Enclave going up into that top lane and trying to just leave the Callista and Tam to pressure by themselves as they already have quite a strong dual lane in that respect. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see when the team's locked and loaded. This is definitely a little bit more of a... I hope to be a little bit more of a closer match to than the last two games as Enclave look to redeem the kind of quote-unquote head-to-head they've had against Diablos Esports this, so far this year or so far this season anyway. Whereas Diablos, they want to establish dominance. They want to establish themselves as a top two, if not the number one team in this tournament. And it all starts with this first game. Yeah, I think it's going to be quite tough, though. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the way Enclave play this early game. They have the tools available when you've got like the Tilly in the mid lane. You've got that Zack, as we're saying, difficult to ward out. Great for those ganks and those dives. If you can get this rolling, Enclave can become a very, a pretty, pretty quickly even become an unstoppable force. But it's a case of if they are able to utilize that effectively. We saw them when they got these early advantages, they couldn't really garner anything else. And this is where we have to see them transition. They have the tools to get that early advantage. They have ways that they can pressure these turrets with the Weaver's Wall, go for those four man dives in the bottom lane when you've got the advantages. But it's a case of if they've got the confidence in themselves and in their play to pull the trigger. Yeah, it's all about when and where for the side of Enclave and Diablos. They'll be fine with scaling, but they can't just leave it for that as uh, the last time they tried to do that. Yes, it did work out for them, but it was definitely a little bit scarier and a little bit uh, riskier going later into that game, especially with a Callista for Frappy being very, very, very fed. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not just about what we think, it's about what you think as well. Let us know in the chat if you think it is going to be Enclave or Diablos taking this one. It's ENC win for Enclave or DBL win for Diablos and let us know who you think is going to take this one and Rob who do you think is going to take this one I think it's going to be on I think it's going to be Diablos and uh, I've just seen too much from these guys right now Igloo is on a comfortable matchup that he's happy with playing the Malphite into the Camille you've got Larison on a very strong mid laner as well because don't forget this is tournament realm so Rise is still at a very strong point on this patch so they're, they've got a lot that's going in their favor right now and it's going to be more on Enclave to disrupt them and interrupt what they're trying to do and we've seen Enclave struggle to do that in the past against this team so I wouldn't be surprised to see Diablos bring it home again but I wouldn't I'm 
hoping that it's going to be Enclave who surprised me because they, they really need to step up. They need to bring something out. And I think this is the game to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, just to keep you guys updated at home as well, we do have a pause as soon as we're into the game. So we do a po a po apologize, excuse me, for the delay. Again, always want to make sure the players are 100%. Always want to make sure everything is 100% before we go into these ones. And it, it, it wouldn't really be uh, a cast with ourselves if there wasn't some massive long pauses before the game came into it. <laughs> Hey, look, it means I'm happy. I've got my fluffy socks on. I got my tea ready. Like, I am good to go right now. And I'm glad that the players are as well. But realistically, I'm the only one that matters here. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, it's, it's all it is. It's all this has been leading up to is just to make sure you're the one who comes out of this with 100%. But uh, <laughs> I don't want to go wait, back into the biscuits. Games? I thought it was just me. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Ghostly Dream Show. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just talking a little bit as well of the, the matches we've seen so far. We're already seeing a little bit of a gap between, say, the top teams and the mid tier slash lower side of the, of the bracket as such. Enclave, they, they're kind of in the middle right now they're very much smack bang in the point of like they should be making playoffs but whether or not they can push forward from there is a different story and do you think they have enough in the tank if they make some adjustments to be able to come back into this and really you know actually push for a final spot in this year's split if you'd asked me that question during qualifiers i would have said yes without a doubt they they know what they need to work on it's it's fixable stuff and there's no reason that they can't do it but when i look at how misfits and excel have just snowballed out of control from even with compositions that shouldn't have been really able to do it i don't know how enclave matches up to that i don't know how a lot of these teams match up to that because they just put on a performance they showed exactly how league of legends is to be played at this level and I don't know if these guys can catch up. When you're you were already behind, now you're just have an even bigger mountain to climb. I want them to prove me wrong though. I really do, and I hope that they're able to do it this time. Yeah, well, all journeys start with the first step, and this is in Claves against Diablos as they take to the blue side versus the Red Devils in Diablos on the right. And Looks like Enclave gonna go with a little bit of an early move. Gonna get the stun straight away on the Furion, forcing a flash. Summoner down, but it shouldn't be a huge amount. Good aggression coming out from Enclave. Yeah, and this is the thing. They just want to get that vision control down and ensure that they're off to the right stars coming through in this early game. The flash on Furion doesn't seem like the big deal because it's a jungler, but because of the potential pressure it can do with that flash combo coming through from the flag and drag, it actually can be quite sizable, especially when you're looking at quite mobile laners coming through on Enclave. Apart from that mid lane, it just means that they're able to play a little bit more aggressive because they know they've got that little bit of extra wiggle room if the gank does come down. Yeah, exactly. They're going to try and keep tabs on Furion now. They want to make sure they know exactly where he is at all times. We actually saw Paris take a little bit of damage there onto the mid laner of Diablos of Larson, and that's definitely something that you need to be careful. Doesn't want to take too many chunks out of that. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a pause coming out. Hopefully, we'll be updated as to why that is very, very soon. But already Enclave, they're looking like they want to try and unsettle Diablos. They want to make sure that they're not sitting down as comfortable as they like in this game and that they can really put the pressure on, especially considering they have this Callista who won't scale as hard as this Tristana. Yeah, and this is what they need to do is ensure that they're they're getting that early control of the game and that's what they've established right now and i like this because it means they've come in with a game plan they're not like okay cool we're going to take this game as it comes and make sure that okay what what are what are diablos doing how can we stop that they're going we don't care this is our game plan this is what we're doing and you are the ones that are forced to deal with it right now it's burnt to flash it's got them vision control so they know where the jungler is starting so already enclave are stepping up to the mark and saying we know how this is going down and it's not on diablos's terms yeah exactly and that's what enclave are gonna have to try and do for the rest of the game because Callista, though very, very powerful at taking neutral objectives and fantastic in that mid game, has a very sharp drop at team fights once you get into a super late game. And team fights is all the side of Diablos wants to do. So, Diablos, they know they have a mid game to kind of deal with it. They know they have a, a mid game lull, if you like, to deal with. How do they get past this? How do they know with their comp that they can come out of this regardless of how bad or good the early game goes for them? 
It is going to be a case of getting down that vision control, especially around that bottom side, because I think to a certain extent, we're going to see some uh, our Enclave forcing their way into the bottom side of the map to see if they can pick up those early kills and stop them from really getting to that late game point. That's going to be on the Jarvan to make sure that he can get in and control that. But also, it's a case of just utilizing um, what they have with their squad as well. I mean, when you're looking at it, as we progress into these team fights, Igloo is going to be gunning for Callista every single time. And because of Callista's short range, if you can actually just hold off on that, I, I, like, I love the idea of the pressure of something can be a lot more than the actual, uh, what actually the outcome of that use of the ability is i know i kind of stumbled through that but to put into practice it's if malphite holds off on the ultimate it means that then it pushes back the callista and she can't go into these fights because th she's got that threat that she at any point in time could be dove on by this malphite and because of that they're missing a prime example of where a lot of their damage is coming from and that, that's something that can play a lot on the minds of these guys so it's going to be a very interesting scrap and skirmishes as we come into this particularly when the teleports start coming in galore because it's going to be the, the threat of a lot of these summoner spells like the cataclysm like even the rise ult in these early stages of the game if he is missing from lane where is he it's the threat of a lot of these uh, spells that are coming out on diablos can be more useful to stalling out a game than anything else have to wait and see and again ladies and gentlemen we do apologize for this delay we hope that this will be a very quick one but uh it doesn't look like it's gonna be we've been here for i think it's like roughly three and a half minutes now just waiting for for anything to happen and uh it's just as frustrating as it is for us uh, as it is for you as it is for us so we do apologize and hopefully we get into this and uh i always find it very funny as well um off on a side note as such, is like always the, the Twitch chat will always blame production. And it's like nine times out of ten, it's usually not production. <laughs> it's, it's usually not. I'm just putting it out there. It's not production sometimes. <laughs> but they're the ones that hold the magic button to everything. So, I mean, of course. it has to be them. <laughs> it's like that meme where it's like the two buttons and it's like, fix it, don't fix it. It's just ESL UK sweating its brow. Like <laughs> That's what I imagine most people think is happening when this when this goes down. But, you know... It's, it is a very interesting thing to think about as well, these pauses, and we're not quite at LAN yet, so we don't have the rule of you can't talk to each other because that'd be very difficult to monitor as such over the, over, the, over the case of an online tournament. But what do you do in these pauses and, you know, for, the, uh, for these players? You're, you're not quite done the game yet. You've gotten a little bit of an invade. You know you've learned, burned a flash off Fury. And what's the next step? How do you keep yourselves pumped up and knowing that you have the momentum on the side of Enclave? And how do you stop yourself from tilt tilting on the side of uh, Diablos? I think at the moment, because we're just so early into the game, it's more just running through the game plan again, going, okay, we for Enclave, we got the flash on the Jarvan. We know we've, we don't have to worry as much about the gank potential because he doesn't have that flash available. We can play a little bit more aggressive. The vision control can be not lacking, but you don't have to play as safe and behind a big wall of wards because you'll have that flash available. So you can try to be that little bit more aggressive. We also got the vision control in the jungle too, which means that they should have knowledge up until about the, the four minute mark as to the path that Jarvan is taking. So this just opens up a lot of stuff for Enclave and this is where they can try and get that pressure. On the side of um, Diablos though, they're just running through, just look, this doesn't really change much, is try and keep this safe, let us scale up, get to that point where we just do become unstoppable in these team fights, and just let the game play out as it has, there's no real need to worry, we're going to be waiting for the level 6 mark to really try and do anything anyway, so it's just, it's the back and forth between the different mindsets and making sure that you're still running through the win conditions on both of these squads. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we are going to go to a quick break just to try and see if we can get this sorted. We do apologize again. We will hopefully be back in about three minutes. That's what the timer is going to say anyway. And when we come back, hopefully we'll have a game for you guys. Don't go anywhere. We will be back to you very, very shortly with InCave Gaming versus Diablos.
We're back, ladies and gentlemen, but I do believe I have been told by the admins that there's going to be a very another a very quick pause very, very soon. So let's not get ourselves too hyped up over this, but at least we're getting some gameplay. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's your problem. Yeah. <laughs> you got some great farming coming through. So already you can see there's a 2CS lead to the 1CS lead of Rise. So basically this game's already over. It's, it's entirely done. of favor. Yeah, and capable. <laughs> we can, we can, don't worry about the pauses. It's fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be back into it, but we're going to leave it for a little bit. Uh, it's going to be an unpause again. Maybe it stays this way. And maybe we get to have a game. I'm not entirely sure. I, I, I hope and pray we do because I don't, I'm sick of pauses. <laughs> <laughs> we always bring the exciting cast. Is there going to be a pause? Who knows? It's like but... <laughs> Rock, Paper, Scissors World Championship. Like, it's just like, will they pause? Will the other team pause? <laughs> it's one of those. But right I say, now, though, ooh, Larson. Larson needs to be very, very careful not respecting the damage coming out there from Paris. And that is going to be very, very annoying for him going forward into this one. Talia's got some great early game damage. Yeah, and some great early game pushing pressure as well. So when she's able to force Rise back away, away from the wave like this, it means she's able to shove in that little bit harder because Larson has to play a little bit more respectful. We see, though, he's having no trouble right now getting this wave to bounce off of his turret. And he just wants to make sure that he's able to play it safe against any would-be ganks that are coming through. Now, see now, Zach riling up. Juna forced the flash out of the rise. Not before, or sorry, not after six minutes. It does not have that stopwatch. That's another big summoner down. Larson goes in, forced to heal after using his flash. And Furion, a little bit late to the party, does end up blowing the flash off of Paris. So, an exchange of summoners to an extent for the side of Enclave and Diablos. Yeah, Larson tried to trade back onto Paris, but that was very, very close. Does force the heal. Uh, won't quite have the summoner shard available. Or sorry, not the summoner shard. Even the the summoner spell shard available to swap over to that teleport. So he'll be walking back towards the mid lane and will lose a quite a substantial amount of CS and experience to that turn as well. So will be a little bit behind, but won't be too much worried about it. Does have that tier available, so we'll be able to continue this farm game in the mid lane. Yeah, looks like it's going to be another. Pause. I was actually just about to say, maybe we don't have a pause come in here. Maybe this is the moment we actually get some decent gameplay coming out. But unfortunately, it is not meant to be. And then... It's going to unpause apparently 10 seconds later. I have been told by the admins, so hopefully we can get back into this very soon. But right now, both sides, they're looking fairly equal. Summoners being burnt by both of them. No one really disrespecting the other. They, don't, they do believe that they are going to lose if they get caught out. Yeah, this is the thing. I like the, the change in Munchkiss as well. You can see they made his way in towards that mid lane just to see if he could put that pressure down. And it was Paris looking like he was going a little bit too far forward to taking the bad trade, but Larson just didn't respect how much damage, as we we're saying, that Talia can do in the early stages and didn't have the mana to try and finish anyone off either after he went through that first rotation of spells. So right now it is looking, I was going to say, slightly in the favor of enclave but this pushing power from Larison is being obnoxious at the moment it's obnoxious obnoxious now and that's only with just a tier it's just going to get so much harder for the Talia to really look for those roams especially with Larson having so much control over that minion wave every single time so i'm curious to see what they do with knowledge that they can't really have the Talia going too many places as we hit another pause it's just it's pause city that's all it is <laughs> <laughs> One of the things to note, though, just before we jump across, is that Jarvan is making his way in to get that vision control down. So you can see they're already worried about the pressure that Zach is going to put down on this mid lane and on the top side of the map as well. This is what they're trying to dissuade at the moment, is getting Kerberos ahead or getting Paris ahead and then utilizing the, in particular, that Talia with the Weaver's Wall to try and put pressure down on the top or the bottom side of the map or up towards the top so right now they're just trying to spot out zach desperately to stop the pressure that munchkiss has been putting down in these early stages of the game and you can see the the wards are very kind of you know up around that top side for the side of enclave they know what can happen they know that they need to keep an idea of where this jarvan is at all times because even without the flash still very very dangerous to have that jarvan roaming around doing as he pleases so they want to make sure the camille gets going they want to make sure the talia is safe to keep pushing up these waves and so that they can enable themselves to have a push back in any of the different lanes but we are back ladies and gentlemen hopefully for the last time into this game please no more pauses ladies please it's 
just want I just want to see a good game. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to see some League of Legends. Come on, man. <laughs> Hopefully these two teams will deliver now and we can get past that. But right now, there's no real getting past Haddo in this bottom side of the map. He's putting so much pressure down onto Frappy right now. Yeah, we're going to see. It's getting confirmation that it is Diablos getting network lag on their end. So they're just trying to make sure to figure it out. Hopefully that network lag will be backed out and, you know, sorted out very, very quickly. But... Again, I don't hold my breath very often for pauses not to happen because it can sometimes very much to my detriment. As I say that, Larson knocked up, knocked back, gonna have to use a lot of damage. They don't quite get the shoveled earth. That means he's able to get away, but he does have to back now. That's uh, a little bit annoying if you're on the rise. It means he doesn't quite get the tier stacking as much as he wants. Yeah, good sidestep from the W right now from Talia means that he's able to survive. And kind of was thinking Paris would use that a little bit earlier to push him back even further into the lane. I'm sure they might have been able to secure that kill, but no harm, no fell. They will push Rise out of that lane. We'll be teleporting back though, so should pick up most of this CS. You can already see where the pressure is being put down. They want to make sure Paris is ahead as he hits this level six point, and that then they can try to move around the map as a score. He's not quite level 6 just yet, though, so hasn't got full roam potential on him, but Talia will have that Weaver's Wall. As I say that, though, Igloo getting jumped in by Kerberos. They're going to have the Zac come in as well. They still have Flash onto Igloo, so he should be able to get out of this relatively safe. They do stun him up. Actually uses his ultimate, so no engage. Rather have the cooldown on that than on his Flash. They do keep him safe. They keep him alive. But again, more pressure from Enclave, more opportunities if they choose to take them. Yeah, that's just a shorter cooldown than the Flash, so he's going to be able to escape. But it does mean that if we're looking towards a teleport, it will be in favor of Enclave. They will have more CC available with Kerberos' kit than realistically Igloo can manage with the teleport play. So might look to see if Enclave can make an advantage through that, especially with Weaver's Wall now available on Paris. He's quite low on mana, so we'll be forced to back, but could end up seeing this potential play come through very shortly. Let's see, we actually see the red buff being stolen there on the minimap by Monkeys. So he's able to get a nice sneaky one. They had vision of the Jarvan in that bot side. So didn't take that one there. And that's going to be more pressure. A little bit of an annoyance as well for Furion. As I say that though, Larson going to hit up. He has got flash available. Will not use it just yet. Doesn't have to. He does take a huge chunk though as Furion finding himself in the mid lane. Trying to do something. He seems to be half a step behind Monkeys every single time. Yeah, but that's that's not Fury on playing poorly. It's great vision control coming through from Enclave. But as I say that, he might have found mid. Yeah, Paris forced to use the heal. He had to get the distance between him and Larson to be enough that he wouldn't have got hit by the Ruin Prison. Otherwise, it could have been a dead Talia regardless of summoners. So only uses the one. They're going to try and get onto XD Smiley now on the spot side. Frappy, not quite as actually as dominant as he was in the first game they played. So... A little bit of an improvement coming out for the side of Diablos' bot side. Yeah, there's not really much you can do when you've got the Tam Kench support, which is honestly was kind of surprised to see them go for that. Um, you want to pair Callista with someone who can be aggressive, like an Alistair or something along those lines. Even the Brom, who is still open this entire draft phase, probably would have been a stronger pick in that scenario where you've got the potential there. But Kerberos is in a lot of trouble, and this is looking again like we saw in that first game where he's getting bullied out entirely by Igloo. And Igloo is just... Picked the Malphite into the Camille, knew the matchup, felt comfortable with the matchup, and felt like he was able to do a lot with it. So, definitely not huge CS lead either side, but definitely Igloo, the one feeling the better of this two in this matchup. Yeah, he's going to be well proficient in this matchup by the time this tournament is out. This is the third time now I've seen him play this into the Camille. So definitely something that he likes and is enjoying at the moment. And you can see why. You know, he was behind on CS at the start of the game, but already starting to equal that back. Has that ultimate now available and has a teleport. So we we're talking about the potential for Enclave to make something happen, but it's now all in favor of Diablos as they've got the summoner spell and the ultimate in their advantage. We talk about the summoner spell, they're actually going to be a lane swap coming out for the side of Diablo. So chucking Smiley and Haddo up to this top side as Igloo is still pushing it in. They may look for a dive, try go for the kill. 
Unstoppable Force is available if they do want to go for it. They have not been spotted out just yet. But Paris has snuck himself up. Monkeys is here as well. This could be a 4v3 situation. Oh, Jusana gets knocked up. Gets let's bounce in and now everybody's just caught. They have nowhere to go. Hado has to go golden as they get the heal out of him as well. Wild Grow comes in. Everyone on Diablo is so, so low. They invested almost everybody into that top side. It ends up going Enclave's way. And bot lane is just for the taking for Enclave. That was an all or nothing play coming out from Diablos and Enclave sniffed it out perfectly by being able to turn that around. They are losing out massively in the bottom lane. This tower should most certainly go down to Frappe and Shogun, which means they've got nothing else to worry about on this bottom side. Now they can transition into the top. You've already got the stronger lane up there now because you've got that first brick golden. Looks like they found Furion. Yeah, Furion needs to be careful. They know that the dual lane though is there. But this is just kind of panic stations for Diablos. The plan didn't work. They had a ward on Monkeys as well. He was one well envisioned. And they still get Smiley. Smiley was interrupted through his um, rocket jump. Which just shouldn't happen. Especially when you have vision. Very poor play coming out from Diablos. They really didn't need to have that happen. And no, they didn't lose any kills. But they lost pressure. Yeah, and Blade of the Rune King now complete onto Callista, who's moving up towards this top lane. That's a lot of gold that's gone into Frappy right now. And this is going to be where, look, they're already, they're now, sorry, only just back into Tristana out of this lane because they now see the pressure coming up from the bottom side. And now, what do they do? They can't try and hold this too long. Or we could even see the side of Enclave go towards this Rift Herald as well. They haven't spotted, though, that the bottom lane from Diablos has not arrived in the top side. So instead, they're just trying to get this vision control down and see if they can make the magic happen. Monkis and Shogun are looking for the dive. Yeah, they're gonna go for it, but TP coming in from the Malphite. They do get the knock up into Hado. Monkey's in a lot of trouble though. Has got Flash available, will not use it. There goes the Cell Division. They do not have a teleport available for him, and he's gonna go down. Larson picks that one up on his roam. There is the Realm Warp as well to try and maybe go for something a little bit more. Actually used it to get himself closer to the mid lane as that was under pressure. But good moves here from Diablos. They saw this, they snuffed out the dive, and they completely reacted perfectly to it. Yeah, they were able to spot that one, and now they should be able to answer this tier one tier in the top lane. You can see the both Callista and Tam are now moving away. They know they can't survive here. It's just going to be them going along with the tower, so they decide to make the play in mid instead. Yeah, they're going to go for it. Larson forced the flash away. They may still go for this one, though. They will. There is the golden statue of Larson. Straight it into Shogun, who's now going to end up just walking away. No problem at all. They trade a turret and a kill both sides super even in this game the gold lead is nothing yeah and good play coming through from enclave realizing that they weren't going to make anything happen on the top side of the map they were too late to that party which meant that they were able to then rotate to the mid they don't get the terror but at least it's something back in their favor when they know that there's so many members of diablos pushing towards that top terror yeah, it's going to be a huge play there in the mid lane. Larson loses his flash, loses his stopwatch, and that can be the difference between life and death sometimes, as Hado just kind of taunts Frappy in the mid lane. Frappy not able to get any auto attacks off and not able to stop the back, but again, huge pressure coming in from both sides, and we talked about these two teams being very even. There is literally nothing between the two right now. There is very little, but that is going to be a problem as we go towards the later stages of the game. We're saying already Callista does need to hit that mid game in her stride, and it's not really been set up too much. She does have that kill, but don't forget, as we start to go into these later stages, it's going to be on Enclave to make sure that they can secure that barn so they can start pushing in towards these turrets. They can't really do too much damage unless they're very far ahead with this Callista. So with this game as it lies, they're going to be trying to battle it out around this objective and when you've got the likes of Igloo on the Malphite, you've got the big AoE of the Cataclysm and that Rise there as well. These become objectives that are very, very dangerous to take. You have to be, make sure that you're able to do them safely and knowing Diablos, they're just not going to let that happen. There's trade of turrets again as we see both sides looking for pressure, but it looks like Diablos are the ones who are committing it hard now for this bot side turret, while the side of Enclave going for that Rift Herald. Ultimately, it will equal the exact same once the tower goes down. But I don't know how worth that is for the side of Enclave. They get a neutral objective, but they're going to lose a dragon anyway, so overall, net win for the side of Diablos. 
Yeah, especially when you're looking at Kerberos to be this bit push pressure so they can keep Igloo away from these Baron objectives. When they're able to push this lane in as far as they can now in that bottom side of the map, it means Igloo is a lot more free to do as he wants around the map, which becomes a bigger issue for these guys. They need to be able to corner Igloo in this bottom lane and make sure that he can't influence any of the fights going across the board, and that's how they should be able to win. But if they're going to give up objectives like this for free, that's not going to be possible especially with the wave management that Diablos have shown in their previous games. Diablos definitely feeling a little bit better after that trade. Does give them a slight gold lead. And they are the ones that will scale a little harder into that late game. And the only turrets that remain are the mid lane ones. And it's so strange having a, a, a situation where both sides are so equal, even in this game, that they're almost identical as where they are on the map. It's 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 madness when you think about it. Both mid laners heading towards the top and bottom lane. Both top laners going to push out the waves and then back away. Both junglers hovering around mid with the dual lanes in the mid. It's, it's tit for tat right now. It's more about who makes a mistake than who makes a big play. Yeah, and this is the thing, there's no big objective on the map right now to try and force that play out. So you don't really have to worry too much about this uh, Ocean Drake for either team because they don't really look towards these big sieges or where they can benefit from the extended regen that are coming through from those Ocean Drakes. So they're quite happy to leave that up. Instead, it's going to be teams that are looking towards Split Push or these big fights that can happen in these four-man squads. And speaking of, it looks like they're trying to get onto Igloo here. Yeah, Igloo does get knocked up, uses his ultimate to try and get away, flashes as well. There is Paris though, he's chasing, he's hungry, and he gets himself a kill. They commit a lot to it though, and then we'll be walking Diablos do knowing that these things are down. Yeah, they are going to have Talia try and push in towards that tier 2 tower. See if they can answer one for themselves. There's nobody really there at the moment. And this is where you enter into a stalemate on Diablo's side. You either go in towards the, the mid lane to hold off that Rift Herald that's going to be coming down. Or else you try and stop the Talia. Right now, they're opting to save the mid lane. Yeah, they're opting for it, but will that be the right call? That is the question. The Rift Herald is still very much available. There is the Realm Warp just to get back into lane. And something that's been very interesting to me is that... Inclave have used their ultimates to get into positions to set up dives and set up kills or tower takes. Whereas the side of Diablos have only used their ultimates to either get away from dives or to get themselves into lane, in, in, in the example of Larson. And that's not what you want to be doing with those ultimates, especially with something like the Unstoppable Force. Yeah, well, it's... it's not so much Diablos doing it incorrectly. It's just Enclave have been able to sniff them out before they get the opportunity to do so. So... Rather than it's Diablos making these aggressive plays and not finding them, it's just the case of Enclave are avoiding them altogether. Yes, they've lost turrets because of it, but they're keeping the main players safe, and it means that this gold lead is staying a lot more even than we would have seen the last time these two faced off. Yeah, still about a thousand gold, which is pretty much just that kind of, you know, a little bit of CS in that, um, excuse me, in, oh, sorry, the kill even, but... It's not even that big of a deal, as you said. I want to see where they put the Rift Herald. That will be timing up very, very soon. Speaking and it's, of. Yeah, speaking of, there it is. Frappy forced to use that one in the mid lane a little bit early. The rest of Diablos are in there, ready to go. So they should be able to chunk this tower, but they won't be able to get it. Yeah, it's just, you can see the stretchy drive comes out from Monkis to see if he can slap one of these guys back in. Uh -oh. But they do have to be careful. Weaver Swall will end up cutting off multiple members. Yeah, we see the Flag and Drag used defensively, and that is going to be another ultimate from Igloo away from the fight. They get the mid lane turret, tier one, and Enclave, they're looking strong, they're looking confident, and they're looking like they might be able to get more out of this game than they did the last time. Yeah, and this is because Igloo is constantly being drawn to help defend these turrets with his team. Either was making the aggressive play in the top lane, or I, as we just saw, trying to escape away from the Weaver's wall. And especially when he's only got that armor available to try and deal with Kerberos in the split push. The Talia, who's picked up a heap of CS, has that kill to her name as well, is going to tear through this rock without mo so much of an inch of spec dripping off. So this is just great for Enclave, where they've got this global pressure coming down and they're able to press onto Diablos. Yeah, as you see now, Paris was looking for Larson, 
They didn't really have vision that far up, so Larson wasn't sure if he was getting collapsed upon or not. Had to get himself straight out of dodge, as we see, reset from the boat sides. Dragon was taken, so that's an Ocean Drake over to Enclave, and that could help them as well. If they go in for kind of poking gauges, then back away, let the regen come in. Won't be huge, but definitely helps a little bit. As we see now, maybe Shogun and Frappy looking for an engage in this bot side. No ultimate to help you here at the moment. Igloo has not got Flash either. And here comes the Realm Warp to try and keep him alive. He will not go down, though. The last tick of Ignite. No, he styles on it. It's Cataclysm on the backside. While Gro does keep Jarvan up, but it doesn't knock anybody with him. More ultimates burned. No objective to take. It looks like Igloo just about gets out of his life. Yeah, I was actually surprised that Kerberos was so late with the ultimate coming down. He should have been able to hold Malphite much closer towards Shogun and Frappy, and then you have the engage come through with the Fate's Call, but instead, they hold off on that so, so long that the play comes to naught, and that's a lot of stuff burnt on the side of Enclave, particularly when you're looking at Igloo, now has the Unstoppable Force available, but you don't have that same safety coming through for Kerberos or for Frappe and his team. Frappe even and his team. I've worked in coffee shops too long. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say, this is like Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Frappuccino in the bot lane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But it looks like Diablos are sick and tired of playing to the tune of someone else's drum, and they are pushing into this mid lane. They want to equal out the turrets, but it's very difficult to do when you don't have complete vision control. Yes, they've got pink wards, but they're mostly defensive. They're kind of a back around their own sides of the jungle, and that's not what you need right there, especially if you're looking for that kind of a pickup. Yeah, I like how Enclave are playing this though at the moment where they're trying to make sure that they get the control and then they can go for the spit push right now though they found Igloo and just trying to poke him out but the Unstoppable Force Unstoppable Force comes in the rest of Diablos as well they're gonna use the ultimate from Camille to try and get something but it's a trade of top laners but the rest of the team are here for Enclave as they're starting to do huge damage onto these players of Diablos there's just not a huge amount they can do Larson needs to try and get away Shogun almost quite getting the stun oh he eats some just before he's able to get it. Shogun still tanking. Larson able to get away. Flashes in. Zonya's for the Zack. Means that he's going to be able to stay alive. It ends up being a three for one trade in favor of Enclave. They looked for more. Didn't quite get it. But it's looking positive. Yet they went so deep though, they took a huge amount of damage, which means that they mightn't be able to secure a lot. They will be moving up towards that top lane turn. Shogun saying, come on guys, join me. But they're going to be looking for Larson instead. Yeah, they're looking for him. Zanya's popped. He's able to get himself out of there. And that means he's using his Zanya's and his ultimate defensively again. They're trying to put the pressure down here on Diablos. Enclave looking for something, looking for constant movements. Almost coming out on top for them, and it's looking very, very good for them so far. Yeah, that is a very late back though, and there's multiple members of Diablos around this barn. They might be able to sniff this out and go straight for the pick, but right now I think they're just trying to get vision control back in their favor in the area. You already said how much that vision control is lacking for this side, so getting an ounce of an opportunity to get that back in their favor is a big, big victory for the team at this point. See now, no magic resistance on pretty much anybody. So this Salia, like you talked about, will shred through even the tankiest members of Diablos. And that is not something you want coming into these mid-game fights. 23 minutes on the clock. Baron very much an option. And if you're pigeonholing yourself into that pit, trying to get that, or trying to keep it away from uh, the side of Enclave, definitely not a situation Diablos would want to be in very often. You saw the damage that Talia was able to put out with that seismic shove in the last fight. That was immense. And when you, as you were saying, no magic resist, nobody in sight of even picking up that magic resist because we've again got Igloo building to deal with Kerberos. This becomes a major factor and a big flaw in everything that this team wants to do. They are looking for the team fights. This is where they should be strong, but they can't because they just don't have the item points to deal with the amount of damage that Paris is able to put down. We'll see exactly what Enclave's next move is and if Diablos can really react to it for kind of looking at two sides of the same coin as you know both sides did almost identical stuff in the early game up to about 15 minutes and just ended up being that Enclave played it better towards those team fights and Dragon up in the next 45 seconds means that's going to be another situation for the side of Enclave to really capitalize on or Diablos to really bring it back. 
Yeah, Kerberos as well has picked himself up a nice two level advantage over Igloo as well. But looks like they're going to try and make the play to escape. They will pick up Paris. They will find him and they will kill him as Paris goes golden, but only for a little while. Did try to use the Weaver's Wall to get out, but was knocked off it. And unfortunately, that is just a little bit too far forward, considering you know that the Realm Warp is available for everybody to join the party. That would have been a good idea if the rest of Enclave were in position. Monkeys, Frappy, and Shogun, though, were too far back in the mid lane, which meant that oh, Diablos were safe to go for that play, and they capitalized on it beautifully. They should be able to pick up this mid lane turret as well, with just Frappy here to defend it. Shogun shows up at the end, but it's not going to be enough to hold on. And with Infernal Drake on the board, no Weaver's Wall available for Paris, this is going to either be the 4v5 or just going over for free to Diablos. They melt that dragon. Holy crap, that was crazy fast. And that is equaling out the dragons. It means they're still a tower ahead for the favor of Diablos. And it looks like they may be able to kind of push this lead a little bit further. They're looking for something around the Baron Pit. Yeah, they most certainly are. But I think with the amount of gold they've just picked up, uh, they'll be happy to back and try and reset. But Enclave might not give them the opportunity. Lulu has backed, which means it's still going to be the... Yeah, this is going to just sneak over. They do have the TP for Igloo. He might be able to join, but it looks like everyone's going to be too late to the fight. Yeah, it's 4v5 for the best part of the Baron, but they back away. Monkey's just going to back away. Shogun in a little bit of trouble. Has not got Flash, but does have the Fates call. And he backs away, but ultimate use TP burned by Igloo, and that means that Kerberos is still in that bot side, available to push that in, available to keep putting the pressure down, which forces Diablos to try and go for this Baron now themselves. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to point out with TP down now, the desperate for Diablos to try and go in. Here comes the team fight. Oh my god, so much damage onto the Zach means that he just gets obliterated. Baron goes over, they do lose one. As we see, Smiley trying to go aggressive with Larson. They force a flash out of the Callista, and eventually he goes down as well as the rest of the fight is still coming in. Zach eventually off of his passive does get taken base, down. Though. Base is being taken by Kerberos. They're just trying to delay. They don't care. They're gonna trade this Baron for an inhibitor if they they can, but Tam Kench goes down as well, meaning that they're not quite able to come out as unscathed as they wanted to. Kerberos will give up his life just for this inhibitor. It's not a big issue. They trade, but was it really worth for either side? Yeah, one for four. The Baron goes over, and it's all going to be what Diablos can now do with this. We are saying that they were relying on Paris to be the wave clear for them earlier on in the game, and now he's going to be on double duty with this Baron pressure coming through, and it's all going to be this is so this is where diablo start to t take back the game if they can group as five they've got massive dive potential they've got the three items onto the tristana she's now hit the th the crit chance that she needs to really be a menace in these team fights and the the split push yes it got the bot lane turret but now you've got a question okay how do you then hold off against the squad that's going to be trying to punish you for that misstep and unfortunately ladies and gentlemen we do have another pause it should be a relatively quick one, but I will keep you guys updated as soon as I am updated. But gold still heavily even. Dragons pretty much even. Yes, you could value the Infernal over the ocean, but you got an inhibitor. You've got that bot side. Unfortunately, this would be perfect if you had a Baron to pressure. And it's all about what Enclave want to do with this pressure now that they've got it. And also to see if Diablos can actually make this Baron play work for them. See, this is the thing. Because it was uh, Enclave who started up that Baron, once they got forced away, they were too low to really try and re-engage or at least poke Diablos off of this. And especially when you've got that Malfoy who has the, an almost guaranteed engage, it becomes doubly difficult to move away from that. So I would have preferred if Enclave just threatened the Baron rather than actually start it up or even put that much pressure down. They didn't know where Diablos was and because they couldn't hold off of that, it meant that they were, yes, the TP came through from Igloo, but they couldn't punish that TP because Diablos knew, oh, well, you've just taken all this damage. You're far too low to really be any sort of threat to this and we can just take the Baron and then the fight after. Whereas if they just put pressure down and try to force that TP by baiting the baron and starting that dance but well, particularly with lulu in the base they could have just tried to fight straight off but instead they end up giving across the baron they do get the inhibitor in return but now it's a difficult few minutes for these guys as they try to hold off against the ablos 
Yeah, as Diablos now form themselves into that mid lane, they're going to look for the big 5v5 fight. That's how they come out of this alive, whereas Frappy wants to put several spears in. Looks like they're just going to give this one up straight off the bat. Don't even want anything to do with it. And that is going to be a little bit of a lead coming up here for the side of Diablos. They've got themselves a 3,000 or just under 3,000 gold lead. Not a huge one, but still a lead nonetheless. Yeah, and now they're going to be pressuring onto this tier 2 tower as well. This is going to be near impossible for Enclave to try and defend. They are trying to hold off, but they will be forced to back away. There's just too much pressure that comes through from Furion and Igloo in that scenario. Now they're going to be moving back towards the mid lane. They weren't quite able to keep the minion wave up towards the end turret, which means they have lost a bit of pressure. Lulu's also going to back now to finish off the redemption. Ooh. Looks like... Enclave are holding on for the moment if they only lose these two towers that's not the end of the world they have that inhib in the bottom lane which means that this 1-4 pressure that they've been going through throughout the game becomes that much more deadly they just need to continue to hold and make sure that there's nothing else Diablos can pick up uh, we see Larson his ultimate not on a massive cooldown but definitely did not feel safe as, a, as the Camille was pushing up on top of him top lane turret is very very low so they could see that the side of Enclave maybe look to try and push towards that, but the fact that Callista is still about half an item, realistically a full item as Mercurial Scimitar doesn't exactly give you the best, you know, kind of fighting stats in the game. Behind this Tristana, Smiley is so, so big with that triple crit and what looks to be going into what I would imagine is a bloodthirst to keep her alive. It's just going to be so difficult to try and burst someone down, especially when you're trying to go for these kind of crazy picks. If Enclave are in teamfight scenarios, they've already lost the game. At this stage, it's too easy for Igloo to join his team, for Furion to get those big Cataclysm engages that we saw against Misfits and end up just wiping Enclave off the board. All they need to do is hold out against this, make sure that they can get their 1-3-1 back in order. And that's why we saw Kerberos, even when they were pushing on towards that mid in hit, Kerberos was in the top lane ensuring they can get the wave control back. Now the Baron buff is steadily rolling off, Enclave feel confident to start moving up again and begin pressuring the turrets on Diablos. And we see Igloo just taking a lot of, not a lot of damage I should say, as we see they're just trying to keep him as kept there as long as he possibly could but ultimate down nothing burned for diablos i feel like maybe that ultimate was just a little bit premature they didn't quite have the, the numbers up there at the time to really go for that kind of a play yeah i'd agree she just used a little bit too early they were trying to get the pick to get the top lane terror but weren't quite able to make that deal sealed so now they're going to be trying to get the minions back in their control you can see rise is shoving out that bottom lane which means that there's going to be no minions threatening that inhib for quite a while. So could end up seeing a swap coming through where Kerberos instead goes towards that bottom lane. And the dragon spawning though, he will be looking, I'm assuming towards the top. Yeah, as I say that though, we're going to see the ultimate from the Malphite knock of Kerberos, who does not have his ultimate sets back away. No mana left on Igloo though, but the rest of his team are coming in, as is the rest of Enclave, as they look to maybe try and re-engage this fight. Cataclysm goes down, as there's going to be the Camille, the first one to fall, but Frappy has no damage to put out on top of this. Trying to do something does go golden, but there's just nothing really to protect him. Double kill for the camp, triple kill for the Tristana, maybe even a quadra kill for the Tristana. It is going to be a quadra kill. Will we see the first pentakill? It will have to be given over to him it's gonna be smiley with the first pentakill of the esl premiership smiley comes out big for the team keeping himself safe from the back line but on the other side enclave why were you trying to fight three members of diablos up there you can gun it down mid no problem whatsoever threaten the dive onto the rise instead they try to take the team fight they play into the hands of diablos's win condition and now they're losing their base because of that misstep this could be game. Smiley is grinning from ear to ear as he starts to take down these turrets. And this is kind of what we saw last time. Good early game coming out from Enclave. They were keeping toe to toe with Diablos. But at the same time, they haven't got the scaling team. Bad mid game to late game decision making from Enclave. It means that they just don't quite get the fights. And like you said, they had no business being up in that top side. No reason to be fighting that. And it's just going to be Smiley picking up the first pentacle of the ESL Spring Split 2018. And this was because enclave thought they had the advantage to rise in the mid lane thought they could use the weaver's wall and monkey's ability to leap 
bounds over the Furion's engage rate, but it doesn't matter when they're this far ahead. And you, they arrive so late to the party as well. You can see, okay, Kerberos goes down by the time uh, Frappy and Shogun show up, just as uh, Frappy has to pop his uh, hour, or sorry, not the hourglass, even the stopwatch. You can see that that's when Paris eventually arrives up, and then Munkas is eventually following up through the back line as well. They were just so fragmented coming into that fight that a good idea, even where it could have possibly happened, turns into a bad one. And there's just nowhere for them to go right now. They burn the teleport on the side of Diablos, but they burn so much more on the side of Inclave. And honestly, it's kind of just a matter of time right now. We're actually going to see now Larson getting caught off, a little bit off guard, doesn't quite get knocked back, but it's going to be the Reaver's Wall that puts Paris in danger. And the rest of Inclave have to back away. They don't have the positioning on this Diablo side. We're going to go trade a Baron for a Cloud Drake any day of the week. Yeah, the ult has come through into the base, but this is just rinse and repeat coming through from Diablos, and I don't even know if they're going to have the time to escape from that bottom lane. You can see Tam Kench is running, they will have the Camille, but the backs have already come through, and now they're gunning it down, but it looks like Enclave have already made their mistake. But we saw in the last time that this exact scenario happened where Diablos picked up the Baron. It was Enclave who struggled to clear out the waves. Now they not only have to deal with this onslaught that's coming, they've got to deal with the minions in the top lane as well. Igloo has positioned himself alongside several of his teammates to begin pushing in this bottom wave, pushing into the super minions that would threaten their base, which means there's nothing really that Enclave can do except try to defend this in hip turret has to be their final stand you would imagine superman is in the top side a baron buff diablos esports it's not something you wanted to see if you're on the side of enclave 34 minutes definitely one of our closer games but diablos have come alive definitely look to try and just end this as quick as they possibly can now this tristana is just so big it actually wasn't a bloodthirster it ended up being a essence reaver and then a frozen mallet for the side of smiley use that use that pentakill gold to good use and just takes so little damage as he goes up and just trying to put down this turret. I don't really think there's much of a defense here from the side of Enclave. They're going to have to try and go for something desperate. Yeah, this was the thing. If Enclave fell behind, there was no way for them. Actually, I'm going to hold off my point because Tam Kench is gone. Yeah, Tam Kench deleted everyone onto the Rise Express as they move into the mid lane. There is the Let's Bounce. It grabs nobody. They're going to jump onto Kerberos, who just can't do anything. Larson, 6 1 and 3, picks himself up another one. And you've just got to think to yourself that this is it. This is the moment for Diablos as they take the first game. More kills for Smiley, more KDAs for the team. As they're just too far ahead, too much damage. From the side of Diablos, thousands damage or thousand magic damage from those rise cues. And as the Nexus turrets falls, the Nexus will be next. And that has just got to be pretty damn confident, conf a pretty big confidence boost for the side of Diablos. And they win the game. I would argue slightly against the big confidence boost. I completely had faith in NK 